Hello. In this video, I will go over how to set up the Rust Desk server in Oracle Cloud completely for free. Rust Desk is a free and open source alternative to software like TeamViewer and AnyDesk, which you can host at home or in the cloud. You will have to enter some credit card information during account creation. But don't worry, I am a long-time non-paying customer of the Oracle Cloud free tier. As long as you don't upgrade, Oracle will not charge you anything. I have been able to try things and make mistakes without ever being charged by Oracle. To start off, open a browser and search for Oracle Free Tier. If this is the first time you are creating a user for the Oracle Cloud, you will get access to a 30-day free trial and $300 in credit to play around with. To create your account, click Start for Free. On this page, add your information. Then verify your human before you verify your email. You have to add some more information after you have verified your email. For customer type, switch over to individual. Change the cloud name if you wish. For home region, select whichever is nearest you. The further away it is, the more latency you will have to deal with. And this cannot be changed later. Now you can just add some address information, followed by payment details, in the form of a credit card. And again, unless you upgrade, you will not be charged. Once you are done creating your account, you should be able to log in and see a dashboard like this. To create your cloud VM, scroll down until you see Create a VM instance. Click that. Start by naming your VM. For me, I like something short, because it's gonna show up in the terminal. There's not much to do with placement. But for image, I like to switch over to Ubuntu, because that's what I'm comfortable with. But you have other choices here. Being the non-paying customer that I am, there's not much to change for shape. But they have plenty of options if you wish to pay. If this is the first time you are setting up something on Oracle Cloud, you will also have to configure some network settings. But this is also pretty straightforward. Give your virtual cloud network a name. And for subnet, click Create New Public Subnet. Give it a name and change out the IP if you wish. The final step before clicking Create is to save the private key. This cannot be done later, so if you forget to do it, you have to delete the virtual machine and start again. With the setup done, click Create. On the next screen, you should see a message about provisioning. This means your virtual machine is being created. While we wait for the VM to be created, we can head over and download Putty. This is a free SSH client, which is able to use the private key to connect to servers. Download Putty and install it. And with this, you will also get something called PuttyGen. This is a tool you have to use to convert the private key to something Putty can use. Open PuttyGen. And in the program, click Load. Navigate over to the location of your private key. Switch over to See All Files, then open your private key. Click OK on the pop-up message. You can now add the password if you wish. When you're happy, click Save Private Key. You should now be ready to connect to your virtual machine. In Putty, type in the IP address of your server. And to use your private key, expand SSH, then Auth, and click Credentials. Click Browse, and then open your private key in Putty. Click Accept on the security alert. To log in, the default username is Ubuntu, no password. The virtual machine is now ready to be used. As I've mentioned earlier, I will use this as a Rust Desk server. So the first step to set up that server is to install Docker. I will add all the commands I use in the video description, including the address to the Docker documentation. Installing Docker is as straightforward as it can be. Just copy the commands and paste them straight into Putty. Now 
Now, to get Rustdesk server up and running, all you have to do is add two commands. They will also be in the video description. The only edit I did was the one command where I changed the IP address. Here I used the public IP address, which worked, but I think I should have used the private IP address instead. Anyways, paste in the two commands to get the Rustdesk server up and running. The final thing you have to do before using Rustdesk towards this server is to open the ports for it. Under primary VNIC, click your subnet. Here you can scroll down to security lists. Click the default security list. To open ports, click add ingress rules. For source CIDR, you can add 0.0.0.0 IP protocol can stay as TCP. For destination port range, add 21115 to 21119. You can also add a description if you wish. Then you have to add another ingress rule. Add the same source CIDR as the previous one, 0.0.0.0/0, but change IP protocol over to UDP. The destination port you have to add here is 21116. Then add a description if you wish, then click Add Ingress Rule. This Rustdesk server is now ready to use. If you have not already installed Rustdesk, head over to rustdesk.com to download it, then install it. If you have forgotten the IP address of your virtual machine, you can head over to Oracle Cloud and then Instances. Here you will be able to find a public IP address for your server. In Rustdesk, click the three dots next to your ID. There, navigate down to ID slash relay server. Click that and add the IP address next to ID server and relay server. Then click OK. As long as you see the message ready down at the bottom, Rustdesk is able to connect to the server. Once you have added the IP address in the same way to another device, you are ready to connect, be it another laptop or a phone. The only issue with this setup is a major one. You don't have a static IP address. But to fix that, you can use something like NoIP. Head over to noip.com and log in or create a user if you don't already have one. In here, expand dynamic DNS and click No IP Hostnames. On this page, click Create Hostname. All you have to add here is a hostname. Then click Create Hostname. To make sure this updates automatically, you have to install the Dynamic Update Client. They do have some sort of a guide, but it does lack a few things. I will add all the commands I use in the video description. On your virtual machine, navigate to slash user slash local slash src. Then copy the download link from noip.com. And in the terminal, type in sudo wget, then paste in the link. Extract the files with the sudo tar xcf command. Navigate into the folder you just extracted. Now we will have to install two things. One is make, the other is gcc. Once that is done, type in sudo make install. This will run the configuration setup. For network interface, type in zero to select ens3. You will then have to add your login credentials for noip.com. Interval is in minutes, so if you wish to have less downtime when the IP address changes, set this to something like 5 minutes. You can also make it run something on each successful update. I will pass on that, but you may have other needs. With the config file created, all you have to do is run sudo noip2. 
If you head back to noip.com, you should see that the IP slash target has changed to your virtual machine's IP address. To make use of this hostname instead of the IP address, copy the hostname and take it over to Rustdesk. Switch it out in the ID slash relay server settings. And when you have done this for all your devices, you should be able to use Rustdesk just as you have been using something like TeamViewer or AnyDesk. I hope this video has been of some use. If you have any feedback or questions, please type them in in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.